There we go. All right. So I'm going to talk today about using post-processing. I know some of you people are a little hesitant to, to delve into it, but I think there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, all these photos, by the way, were taken on an iPhone 10. And um, I'm going to show you first, their, and their JPEGs. They're, they're not raw images. I'm going to show you the before image here, and then the processed image. And in here, I picked up the, um, the clarity a bit and uh, the fine details. Uh, I've been working in Luminar AI lately. Uh, and I think it's beneficial for people that don't have Lightroom or Photoshop and they wanna work more on images and maybe it's a little easier to use. Um, and for people that do have both at this point, um, I'd suggest giving it a try. Um, I'm delving into Luminar quite a bit and I like it. Uh, there's a few things in there which we can go through that uh, I think are beneficial and, and add more to your Lightroom images. So here's another version here. This is just straight out of the camera. And here's what's after it's been post-processed in Luminar. Excellent. Now is that a, a, a set uh, type of effect that you're putting on there? Are you doing that individually? Somewhere? Uh, uh, did you say is it an effect? Yeah, um, I, I go two different ways. Either I'll start with an effect and then embellish it to my liking, or I'll just go right for the um, uh, tools and, and just do my own adjustments. Okay. Now this next one, I, I did a little bit of adjusting because it was, uh, it was uh, way out. It was a little dark and so forth. I, I didn't have the raw here. Well, maybe let's see. We can, well, pre-process because they're all JPEGs. Let me let me go back to uh, to this one and uh, let's take a look at it. Let's see if I can get to it before on there. I'm gonna move you guys over. You can see I've I've done a little bit uh, pulling the highlights down, pushing the shadows up making the whites a little brighter, the blacks a little blacker, pulled some clarity up. Um, so let me just hit my backspace key here. And that's the before and after. And did a little, crop, did a little perspective straightening out too. You can see it was uh, keystoning out a bit. So I straightened it up. But uh, you can see that the shadow details are really plugged up before I started doing anything. Yep. Yeah they've come up a little bit, but uh, quite, quite a bit. Yes. Yeah. But then I went to Luminar with it and this is where it's at now. Oh yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So big difference. Um, you yeah. really opened this up nicely and uh, it balanced, balanced the room out a bit, brought, brought some more detail in and so on. So, that's pretty good. Yeah. Is this a Shaker Village somewhere? Where is this? Uh, this one, I believe, is in Wilmington, Virginia, or Wilmington, North Carolina. I'll, I can find out in a second for you here. I, like I just Colon wondered. Colonial House. Yeah, I was one of the uh, one of the mansions. Uh, yeah, I can tell you real quick here. Let me just go back and. Got GPS on here. Yeah, Wilmington, North Carolina. That was where <clears> the engines are. In fact, uh, we can map it here. That's what one nice thing I really like about it. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> you can zoom right in. I think it's got the name of it, even. Yeah, it's in the historic district and it's uh, the Bellamy Mansion. So, so that's a nice feature, you guys. Oh, yeah. Don't use it. You should uh, if if you've got uh, geotagged images. Anyway, um, this next one I'm going to show you basically out of the camera. 
and then a little bit of Lightroom Illuminar work. Add a little straightening, a little cropping, some color adjustments, a little bit of sharpening. And that was in Luminar. And then for people that want to get a little more of an artistic flair, I went into Topaz. So okay. that's something you can do in Topaz. So I was just going to quickly go through both programs here. And um, let's just. Uh, Show you what you can do here. This meeting is being recorded. What did that say? Oh, uh, just this meeting is being recorded. Again? <laughs> okay. Hope we got the first part. <laughs> All right, so we're in Luminar here. Um, move you guys over a bit. All right. All righty. So, um, as to your question before, Alan, you've got these presets up here, and, and AI kind of picks the ones it thinks would work with this image. Oh, okay. So, you've got all these different ones. So, let's say we'll go to objects since that's what it is. And once you click on that, it gives you a bunch of different ones you can try. So, here's your presets. Okay. So say you like this one, maybe you want to back it off a little bit. You can you can take it back a little bit or take it completely. Let's say we like it right around there. And then what you can do is come up to edit. And once you're in edit, you've got a full complement of your tools. Now, anywhere that this preset has done something, there's a little dot. And you can go in there and see what was happening. So, so in here, it, yeah, I think they did much of anything. Um, I generally play with smart contrast first and and enhance. Those are the two things I go to to start. A smart contrast, you can either bring it up or down, depending on what you want to emphasize later. I think I'm going to flatten this one out slightly so I can play with the contrast a little more in the low, medium, and high range, which I'll show you in a minute. Your enhance, basically, there's a little switch on the top here too. Let me shut it off. So that's what your enhance is doing. Kind of brings everything a little richer. And down here, if you add a sky, there's a sky enhancer as well. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is go down here to super contrast. And that goes in high mid-tones and shadows. So you can take your Highlights, if they're too hot, you can take them down a bit. And then moving to the left or the right, you know, that blows them out more, makes it more contrasty, that makes it less contrasty. So you can adjust it accordingly. You do the same with your midtones and the same with your shadows. Now, the cool thing about shadows is you can put just a little bit of it in without plugging it up. And then you can take your balance over to the side and and it's kind of like, um, let's see if I can get this a little more strong. Yeah, it's kind of like increasing dehaze in Lightroom, it, it, but it doesn't seem to plug things up as much because it's only working in the shadows. So if you want to richen your image a bit, you move this over until you, you've got a pretty good shadow contrast without plugging or losing any detail and then bring your balance over to the right and it really increases it so if you ever want to see what you're doing there's a little eyeball up here that's the before that's the after now we haven't touched detail yet uh, point so out that eyeball again will you please it's up here on the top and if you push it in that's your before that's your after if you like split screen you can also do that okay Move it wherever you want. Thank you. Yeah, I, I prefer the eyeball. I just like to look a little before and after like that. Now, the next thing I usually like to do is work on the structure. So, so 
you know, you can get too carried away. That's all the way up. But you know, just a little bit really helps a lot. And then after that, I go into detail. You, it's similar to Topaz um, precision contrast or precision detail. We have small, medium, and large. I don't do a whole lot in small because it tends to emphasize the grain if you're grainy. There's your medium. I'm going to crank it way up so you can see it. It's not doing a whole lot. And then here's your large. So you can turn it on and off to see what it's doing. There you go. So that's on, that's off. So you can see it's helping out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to add a vignette, it's here. Um, the cool thing about their vignette, if you open up advanced settings, if you Take it down a little bit. You can mess with the size and so forth, like most of them. Change the roundness, change the feathering. But it has a, another slider called inner light where you can just bring up the center. So maybe you want to bring up the center and then darken down the rest like that. You know, it's kind of a nice feature. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then when you're done, you just hit apply and away it goes. I'm going to cancel out of here. I just installed this yesterday. <laughs> oh, good, good. Okay, well, I hope that was helpful. Uh, so let's say we did all that and now we're here. Okay, and we want to go into Topaz and make it artsy give it that painterly look. So now we'll just go in here and go down to Topaz Studio 2. And I always like to keep it in Pro Photo. A lot, you know, you can change these in your preferences if you're, in, if you're using Lightroom a lot. I like to go at least Adobe 1998 or Pro Photo because it gives you a little better range when you're, when you're pushing things. And uh, it, it keeps from banding and other things. That and 16-bit will keep you from getting a lot of banding and other artifacts that you don't want. You're going to probably print in Adobe RGB uh, 1998. Uh, don't use sRGB unless you're just doing something for the screen. And uh, ideally, I think we talked about this last week, set up your camera so it's at least capturing the most it can get in Adobe 1998, or if it has Profoto on it, go to that. Okay, so you've got a similar setup here. You've got your, your separate uh, tools here on the add filter, and then your add look, you've got predefined looks and you can, you can break them down by all favorites, etc. If we just do artistic, it'll give you the different artistic ones and if you uh, you want to preview you just click on it and you'll see what what it's doing you can uh, use a slider by the amount and if this white bothers you that's because it's it's not using the photograph as a background i'll show you how to fix that pretty quickly um but let's just uh I just want to look for uh, Renoir, I think is what we used last time. Yeah, there it is. So that's a little heavy handed, but we can fix that. I'm going to leave it at 100% for now. So what happens is you have a folder and whatever filters this particular preset uses a will be inside of it instead of the little dots like you see in um, Luminar. So if you click on it, you'll get all the tools and adjustments that are available for this particular um, effect. So you've got brush size. As you increase it, you can see it changes things dramatically. You got paint volume, so that either a lot or not much. You have the opacity of the paint. You have stroke rotation. 
which kind of twists it. The more you go, the more, more it rotates it. And then there's also a rotation variation that you can play with. So oh. things will go different ways. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, stroke color variation, but I, I don't particularly like that. It kind of gets prismatic looking. And that you can take care of by your color. You know, right, right here, it's got all the colors. I believe if it's just red, it's gonna take care of those. Um, the other thing we were talking about earlier is in the texture, before I start playing with all these sliders, if you go all the way down on the bottom, it says solid or original. If it's solid and you just pick a background color, like, you know, you could do white or whatever you want, uh, that will be whatever shows in between the strokes if you start thinning your strokes out. But if you want the image to be in your background, you just change this to original. And I'll show you that difference here pretty quick. Um, so let's say we change the brush size. You see how it's getting that color now? But if you went uh, and changed that background to, um, there's white, you change it to original, the picture is going to be back there. So you don't get that white effect if you don't like it. This is also where you can put your texture in, like if you want kind of a, um, you know, a canvas type of background, you can pick one of these and then you can pick the strength you want. Yeah, let me, uh, let me zoom in a little bit so you can wow. see. Yeah, so there's your strength. You can make it as heavy as you want. You can make it any any size you want if you really want it thin like that. So that's how that works. Okay. So getting back to the paint now, uh, you've got different brushes you can you can try. Or on this one, if you uh, change the brush, it's going to change what the stroke looks like. Um, let's go back to a bigger stroke so we can see it and go back to the image. There we go. Now there's another real important set of sliders that's coverage and transition. Coverage is how much the effect's going to cover the paint, uh, the original photograph. And the transition is where it's going to go from. So let's see if we can get something fairly thick here so we got an idea what it looks like. Well, maybe something like that. Okay. So if we take this coverage down. You see, it's more, and you can pick where you want it to be. So if you want the coverage center, maybe just up here at the top further up, you know, and then have it fall down, depend, you know, what your subject matter is. You can take that and then take your transition down. You can, you can see that's where it is. That's where it's doing the work. So, so you, can, you can spread it out a little bit from there, like that. Or say you want to move it down more centered. You can do that. But working with these two sliders in this target, you can kind of take care of how you want your paint to go on the actual image. So maybe you only want it in this area, but you want a smoother transition. So if you take it all the way down, it gets really hard between where the paint is and where it's not. You take the transition up, it feathers it. And then when you take the coverage down, you can not only have it affect the areas you want to. So you can do kind of almost like a reverse vignette with the paint. And then in addition to that, you've got masks. So if you click on your mask and you get a brush and you take it to the right, which will be a little opaque, Black is like totally getting rid of it like that. You can see how it got through it, we'll undo that. Whereas white's not gonna do anything. It's, 
So if you take it down a little bit, you can start taking some of these areas down that maybe you wanted to knock down a bit and bring back to reality. And going over again and again is not going to do anything. If you want it to be more to the original, you got to make it a little darker. And you can keep playing with that till you get it where you want it. If that's too much, you just turn around and go back. There you go. So there's the basics and that pretty much works with any one of these stylistic uh, or painterly effects um, in your creative area. This one's impression, but yeah, pretty much any of your creative or stylistic effects, you can adjust by mask or by coverage, and then you can adjust the effect by using the sliders that that particular effect has. Any questions? Okay. I learned a lot. That was good. All right. Yeah. Good. All right. Excellent. So we'll quit this. We're not going to save this. And let's see what you guys got this week. So let's, uh, let's just go down the list here. Okay. Hey, Al, you know, you mentioned you were back in the Midwest, so looks like you brought some of that with you. You well, still here, Al? There you are. I'm still here. Okay. Uh, am I, can you hear me? Yep, now we can. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's just a wheat head. Uh, it, it's slightly not focused where I wanted to be. It's it's a little uh, front focused, but no matter how I did it, it wanted to focus on the beards in front of it. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, did you try doing um, changing your your focus points to maybe one or two or or spot? I was on spot. You were on spot. And you're still getting it that way. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you just got to go to manual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I didn't have time for that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I had I had a big combine coming right down at me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're thinking, oh, where the heck do I go manual? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it gets crazy. Well, you could play and tickle this a little bit in Luminar. Uh, I, I was thinking of that as you were doing it, if I would, uh, yeah. when, when it wasn't slightly in focus, you just screw it up more and then nobody notices. <laughs> well, you can do that, but you could also just, you know, paint this area in. Um, yeah, well, yeah. you can see right there where that front beard yep. was sharp. Yep. But yep. the kernels weren't. Now, I preferred the kernel thing, sure. Yeah, exactly. But I, I, I still wanted that that shape picture to mm -hmm. show, so I went ahead and showed it. Yeah. Now, do you have Luminar or Topaz? I have Luminar, and I have an older version of Topaz. All right. Uh, I don't know if the older version has... Uh, Precision contrast and precision detail. If it does, you can use that. If not, Luminar, just go in and use uh, use the tools I have, and uh, you can definitely bring that. Up. And and you can mask just the kernel, you know, just that kernel area. Let me turn my my little guy on there. So you could just mask this area here, and and sharpen that more, and leave everything else alone. Yeah. You know, so that, that would be very easy to do. You could also darken the background a little bit more to make this more prominent. You know, there's a lot of... Yeah, well, that would be players. useful. Yeah. Because it's it, it's the beginning of a really nice shot. Uh, but I think you could take it a lot further in post. So Yeah, I, I haven't really tried on it. I've been so busy on other things. But, All right. Well, when you get a chance, just give it a try and see what you think. I may try that. 
Yeah. You know, Al, um, you could just also just, well, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Do you have a pocket knife? You know, if you've got a, a dead bud or a leaf or something that's in the way, just take that leaf out <laughs> to begin yeah, with. But, just cut it but, back. Yeah, but the things that were, were affecting me were the beards on the, uh, the, the, the sprongs that come out. Right. It's, and, yeah. and cutting those away cuts away the picture, too. Well, I meant the ones that are right down in the lower right corner that you don't care for. Right. Just have given them a haircut to begin with. Yeah, but uh, you have to do that with a big combine coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and of course, once it's passed, the stuff's all moved down, so that doesn't help. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess you got to get a few rows over. <laughs> Yeah, and the rows are 40 feet. Yeah, well, and speaking of the combine, there it is. That's a huge width. Look at that. Yeah, that, that, now that's on my, uh, uh, the home place that my wife grew up at. Uh -huh. and, and we were there for a funeral of her brother. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, that combine, is the combine itself is a six hundred and forty thousand dollar machine? Oh, jeez! The headers another ninety thousand. No, man, that's amazing. So, huh? And they've got three of them. Yeah, yeah. Back in my photo days, um, one of my first assisting jobs was uh, assist a guy who was shooting uh, international harvester farming equipment, and <laughs> stuff is huge i'd have to go clean it and then you know get the lights set up for fill on certain areas yeah. then he'd shoot it and of course he was using an eight by ten on location so that was always fun but uh yeah i remember and they were always cursing deer you know with a big competitor so but uh yeah pretty amazing machines But nowadays, you know, they're in that bubble. They got air conditioning and heat and <laughs> music and whatever you want. Oh, yeah, the whole thing. And, and they also don't even touch the steering wheel most of the time. Uh, yeah, it's just programmed out. It's programmed out and it's driven by GPS. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Pretty amazing. And it probably uses the same plot it used to plant the seeds <laughs> and make the furrows. So. Uh, well, probably, but, uh, yeah, of course it's not the same, same machine. They have the oh, tractors. Yeah. I'm just thinking they could save the, the points from one to the next. Pretty amazing. Okay. And that's why we don't have family farms anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I hear, uh, talk about, uh, uh, and this is, by the way, a, a family farm. The, the kid, and I call him a kid, he's 31, uh, that's in the, in the combine itself is the son of the guy that owns it. And, and they run the farm. Uh, now they have, uh, depending on what time of year, they have up to seven or eight more employees. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, it's, it's a family operation, but it's not the small farm that I used to know. He, yeah. he uh, uh, farms over 4,000 acres. Yeah, yeah. And this was in an area where, where when I grew up, uh, 360 acres would be big mm -hmm. at the time I was growing up. Sure, yep. Well, you kind of wonder how many people that the uh, machine actually replaced. Oh yeah, it does. Uh, uh, yeah. But but what I, when I was growing up, combines were used to combine on multiple people's sure fields. Now he, this guy owns three of them, and he doesn't combine for anybody else. Yeah, it used to be kind of like what they did with medicine, where you know they. If you had a certain uh, machine that was worth several million dollars, you, you all would get together and lease it and 
during the season that you use it, you just take it from place to place. Or yeah, yeah. Well, getting back to the aesthetics on this, uh, what do you guys think uh, Hal could do to give this a, just a little more snap and so forth? Spend a little more time on it. I can tell you that I did it <laughs> all the morning. It's like anything. <laughs> exactly. Maybe bring the uh, top down a little bit. Get rid of the sky is not necessarily all either change the color in the sky a little bit or just bring the top crop it a bit. You know. Yeah, I did both. You got some more of this detail. You got you got some clouds there, but they're they're just kind of blown out. Yeah, I've right. I've already done both. Mm -hmm. and, and I agree, I'd like to do a little more. It was, uh, the, the, even the part you see blue now was gray. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. And I brought a little bit of blue out. Uh, I could have brought a little more blue out. Uh, and of course that's cropped to nine by 16 preference. Mm -hmm. If I had cropped it to two to one, I could have gotten rid of a little bit more of the sky. Mm -hmm. What about just changing the uh, exposure and the sky? Just uh, yeah. see it bring it down. Well, the other thing you could do, I'll, I'll just open Photoshop and you can do the same thing in Lightroom since I know that's where you do most of your processing. But uh, say this was a raw image. Uh, That would be just duplicated. And go oh, camera. <clears throat> By the way, uh, Sandy, you made a comment about settings in your camera. Uh, uh, your color the, space? Uh, the, 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 the color spaces? Right. Now, if you're shooting in raw, that won't make any difference. Yeah, true. It, it, it only makes a difference. If you're shooting in JPEG, that'll make a huge difference. Yeah, exactly. But if you're shooting in raw. Yeah, it's not processed. It, it uh, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Now, I, I go to Clarity and, and DAs a lot. Uh, sometimes vibrance and saturation. And once you get all your other stuff, since you already did it, we don't need to, but once you go through all this other stuff, you know, a little clarity and a little dehaze goes a long way. Yeah, it does. And, and I had applied both mm -hmm. uh, prior to you getting it. Yeah, uh, and I also like to use texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm real careful with texture because it, it edges up the grain too. I mean, if you're at a low ASA, it's not going to matter. But if you're yeah, say now right there, and it's because it's JPEG. Yeah, you're getting a little blotchy in the sky. But yeah, you can see it. But uh, uh, but but that's because what I sent you was JPEG. Yeah, well, it's also the clarity. The clarity will, will, will edge that stuff up too. Yeah. So you got to kind of watch that, but. But yeah, if you play around with us, and if you've already done that, then maybe you might want to go to Luminar and try some of those things I just showed you. Because that's exactly what I would do next. Yeah, why don't you do that? And uh, since this is taped, you can go back if if there's something you've forgotten. You know, play yeah. it, which is kind of nice. Okay, so hope that was helpful. Uh, cancel. Yes. All right. So let's just close that, not save it. All right. Here's another variation. Now that actually that I said he owned three combines. I was inside of one mm -hmm. taking it through the window to the other one. Uh, but he's unloading from the combine to the trailer that a, a tractor is pulling. Now they're moving full tilt. He's combining. He didn't slow down a step when he started that. He's still wow. combining. Wow. There, there, there was no stopping. I've got a couple of pictures of the same process going on, except the combine I was in was, unload, uh, was dumping uh, that. But 
to make matters even worse, when, when that trailer gets full, they're going to take it to a uh, semi and dump it in that and then come back and get more on the field. Hmm. And is the semi there? This is, or is that part, that... this is a small family farm. Yeah. And is the semi from another company that's just there waiting and, and digging, or is that theirs as well? That's theirs as well. Oh, yeah. Now, the combine is, is about a 730,000 as you're looking at it. And, and I don't know what that dang trailer is, and I don't know what that tractor is, but you can guess. A lot of money. Uh, you don't come out of high school and decide to start farming if you want don't have a father that's already doing it. Yeah, you can imagine. And then here's an interior shot of <laughs> all of screens and things that uh, program it to make it happen. Yeah. Uh, by the way, a, 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 a comment on, uh, I'm going to have you do this in a minute, but yeah, I was inside and I took a picture of Brock uh, and uh, uh, you can just see what it's looking like from the inside. But this was taken with my R5 and the uh, 24 to 240. Mm -hmm. uh, zoom in on one of those screens. Yeah, you can see they're, they're really crisp. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it kind of blew my mind when I did that the yeah. first time, even <laughs> yeah, though I'd already been using that camera for a little while and knew it was pretty good. But when and, and it's got pretty good depth of field, also, it's not. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, a good lens. Now here you've done uh, a real good job of post processing it. Well, I I have spent some time on this one. Okay, there you go. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, a couple of those I didn't spend any time on. I just did them this morning. But th oh, this okay. one, uh, this this one I had spent some time on. And I'm going to print a copy of that off and send it to Brock. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. If you get this kind of depth and detail in, in these, yeah, they'll, they'll look so much better. So, Al, can you hear me? This is Trees. How are you, young lady? Oh. Uh, so do they burn those fields when they're done? No. What they did, uh, I think they finished the combining of these fields the day after I was in this. Uh, one, one combine can uh, harvest uh, 300, 400 and some acres a day. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's ridiculous, mm -hmm. but, but they finished their work and the next day they put a uh, soybean drill on the back of a tractor and they started drilling. They didn't do a thing to the field. They just drilled right over that wheat stubble. Wow. So in Oregon, uh, they burn, they burn everything. That's too bad. It's, well, yeah, well, there's some advantages to that because oh, you no. get the, the, the ash is, is pretty good uh, fertilizer. Yeah, exactly. But uh, uh, in southern Illinois, they double crop. Uh, you're far in Oregon, they're too far north to double crop. And mm. so we, we, do, we do the uh, wheat. And then right after that, I mean, the next day, they put a drill on that and put dr uh, they drilled the soybeans. Wow. Hmm, interesting. But but now my my steps son lives about 100 or 150 miles north of there and that 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 short distance is enough where they can't double crop. Mm -hmm. and, and so they 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 Far, they changed their wheat differently. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also, if they had beans, the plant, they, they, they had planted the beans two or three, four weeks before uh, this harvest took up. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, if you plant beans 
right after wheat, you have a shorter growing period than if you plant them. If you don't have wheat on, you can plant two or three, four weeks earlier. Oh. And, and if by doing that, you get a bigger bean crop, but now you're getting a wheat crop and a bean crop. Oh. Cool. And when I used to live in Puerto Rico, they burn all the sugarcane fields and there was so much of it, the ash, uh, it was like black snow. It was, it was just- Well, <laughs> in, in central Kansas, where I grew up, uh, actually a little west of where I grew up, but close enough that I was aware of it, uh, the uh, pasture land they burned all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Every, every year they burned the pastures. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, the pastures grew better and it also kept any shrubs or anything like that from coming up. Yeah. Uh, and so. Speaking of which. And that, <laughs> Go ahead. Kills these guys. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Alan. You went a little more artistic on this. Looks and, <clears throat> yep. This is one of these giant uh, dandelion. I'm not sure what they're called, but it's one of the really big, probably about three inch uh, sphere of seeds. So, wow. Yeah. I, uh, Took it into uh, the topaz and did a couple of things on there. One of them was uh, the chalk, uh, concrete on chalk. Mm -hmm. And uh, I softened up uh, the middle part of it just to try and retain some of the reality of it. <laughs> but uh, I like the softness of the edges, and yet it still shows some of the fine detail of the, the seats there. Mm -hmm. Oops. Uh, hit the space bar thinking I could uh, move it and just went through them instead. Yeah, I got to use my mouse. Yeah, there you go. Mm. Nice detail there. Let me zoom back out. It's amazing again. how it retains some of these really fine edges. So Yeah. Like that. Like yeah, that. like these just yeah. Really nice. Yeah, it's a lovely subject for that technique. Thank you. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I, I wasn't, uh, and it's just a natural background. Like there's nothing special there, but uh, mm -hmm. um, I can't remember. I think it was. Yeah, it was a uh, the micro lens I used on this. Yeah. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, it looks like it. And on this one, you know, my eye keeps going down here, but I don't mind it. I, I think it just kind of carries you through. Yeah. Yeah. Love the color. Yeah, the colors are wonderful. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, without that green, it, it would be kind of blah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Very nice, Helen. Thank you. Real nice. I just took this yesterday morning. Um, like I was saying before, we have got a little bit of smoke and haze and, and mist. And uh, I've, I've been waiting a long while to get a kind of day that looks like this so I could go down and take this image. So um, this is on a reservoir in Calgary. And uh, I put a high key effect on it also because I just like that really kind of very blind, washed out type look to it. I like the mood it sets. Yeah. It's just, it's really a nice image. Really yeah, nice. Thank you. Yeah. Really yeah, nice. And just a little bit of the reflection on there just adds to it. And the, yeah. There's a slight hint of a background uh, to the trees in the, at the far bank. Yeah. Very, it gives it a very foggy, misty effect. Yes. Yeah, it wasn't quite as foggy as that. It was quite foggy, and, and uh, I wouldn't have gotten anywhere close to this had it not been there. But uh, yeah. I, I, the high key effect uh, certainly accentuates it a little bit. And what program was that in? This was uh, in Luminar 4 that I, mm -hmm. this one, this effect one. Yeah. Oh, very nice. 
And you have AI uh, as well? I'm sorry? You have AI as well, Luminary AI? I do, but I, had, I didn't have that going at the time, so. Uh -huh. Yeah, try that, uh, that super contrast and, uh, and um, I can't remember the, the first one, but uh, accent, I think it is. Try those two and just, just sparingly and see what they do for you. I was I was going to ask you do, you. do you think the do you think the image the the bullets are, is is too subtle? Should it be a little bit more stronger? Maybe just a hair, and you certainly could just mask and, and, and deal with that directly too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, quickly. Um, oops. Yeah, that's the right one. <laughs> I've got before an AI on here. Sometimes I hit the wrong one. There we go. Um, yeah, I'll move you guys again. Seems every time I change programs, it just moves you to the right and goes over your <laughs> over the menus. Okay, yeah, uh, this enhance, you know, maybe. Yeah, that seems to pull the boat up more than the background. Yeah. Here, if I turn it off and then on, just I that like the background up. coming up. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming up just a hair. Yeah, right in here, which is not bad. But if you wanted to avoid that, you know, you can certainly mask that off. Yeah. You know, Gives the uh, reflection a little more definition, too. Yeah. And then the other one I would try would be this super contrast, because you can you can adjust the highlights. You know, You're in the middle of the right. You know, and then yeah. you can even make it more kind of ghostly looking. And then, uh, then maybe take your shadows. If there aren't much. No, there's not much in the way of shadows there, is there? <laughs> I guess it would be in the mid-tones. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, that brought out the... Yeah, so the mid-tones can bring the boat a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, if you don't want it affecting this area, just, you know, mask it out. But uh, yeah, here's your before and after. Yeah. A little more snap. Yeah. And again, if you don't, you, know, you, you can take the whole thing at the bottom here. Yeah. And just tone it down to get where you like it. So I, I usually tend to go too much and then bring it down here. Yeah. If you want. The way you have it there is more or less close to what it was. <laughs> yeah, it's still it's still enough. Yeah. You know, to to you don't need much on these. You just gotta tickle it in there. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. I like his his uh mood that he had though. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just the way it was. I really liked what he had. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, this is the same day, just uh, well, it's the same exactly the same time, it's just around a little, little bit from the boat. So, um, but what I really liked about this was was just that little bit of grass coming out of the water there, so. yeah, mm -hmm. yes. And and I was in two minds whether to crop that right in tight, uh, and just show a little bit of the foliage on the right hand side, but so I'm. You know, you could crop this a million different ways, I guess. But yeah. This is actually more or less a full image that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I'd do anything to this one. Yeah. Looks real. Oh, nice. this is beautiful. Yeah. What did you? Is this uh, then through Nick or something, Alan? That you take it took to black and, um, and white? Um, uh, I don't think so. No, not in okay. this one. It was. Um, That's just what it looked like. I took it through the Oricon effect on Luminar 4. Okay. So there was an effect in there called Oricon, O-R-T-O-N, I think it was. Oh, Orton, yeah. Orton. Yeah. Yeah. So really nice, yeah. yeah. a really nice, uh, I think it's more intended for portraits, but it uh, gives it a nice kind of look to it. Yeah. yeah, it gives it a glow. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, Orton effects a lot of fun to play with. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Thank you. 
Okay. From the other night, huh? This was, uh, yeah, I went out the other night there to take a photograph of the sun going down in, in the park behind us. Now, it's pretty happy with that shot, but at the same time, the moon was just up there and and it was close to that color, not quite, but it was close to it. But I, I just thought that this had a really kind of mysterious uh, type. Yeah. Yeah. The from, the, from the smoke. smoke. From the smoke, yeah. 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 Pretty neat. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's almost. Yeah, lean toward Mars color. <laughs> yeah, it's almost otherworldly type look to yeah. that. Yeah. The there could go cat. bad moon, bad moon horizon there. Alex. Yeah, yeah. The, the rust moon. Yeah. <laughs> it's got that kind of dull look to it, which is unusual for the moon. Yeah. Very cool. cool. Different. Just just yeah. searching for something to be different, right? Yeah. 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 This is a little bit different. <laughs> This is a this is a a rail a railroad. Oh, okay. That's one of the spikes holding the spikes. Spine, they must the they must be cost cutting, Alan, because yes. they well. <laughs> <laughs> only just use one spike, not two. Yeah, and they do them diagonally. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. This is it's actually a, it's a place called Heritage Park, so. They drive a train around this park. Oh, okay. So All right. Not, not, not the bullet train going over there. <laughs> no, no. Imagine pounding that thing in. Oh, it's actually <laughs> huge. They're pretty big. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I saw that the, the demo of that, they used two people. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. they took turns. So bam, bam, bam. Yeah. yeah. So Better be synchronized. You can see all yeah. the hammer marks on it. Yeah, big sledges too. Oh so yeah. I like I like the the, the rustic colors and the, the blue steel. Yeah. And uh, just the just the texture of the, the rusted metal. Yeah. Like, Hammer blows on the head of the spike. Yeah. Yeah. And and I kind of like the 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 angle that it was at as well. So rather than this. Perpendicular stuff, I thought. So, I'm going to look at what could be a bit different. Yeah, it works. Nice composition. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thanks for bringing those in. Thanks. Okay. Denise. I think one of these was from last week, but I think maybe you did. It's, uh, I, I have a different crop on it, a different technique, different crop, but um, you recognized it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I I have a I don't know a blessing or a curse for remembering images. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. That's very nice. Oh, I just see now I've put in six. I thought I did five. Oh, no, that's all right. I'm sorry. No, I thought you I thought you brought the New York one back because you might have changed something, but yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. I, I, I just have a different technique uh, anyway. Okay. I, um, I only sent four, so you can have one of mine. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> I, I really can count. Um, <laughs> Al, I, like the, I like the colors in this. Oh, thank you. And the Al, um, your combines and your bearded wheat. I've taken a couple workshops, one from Mike Motes and another one from Brian Peterson. Anybody here know Brian Peterson? Mm. Of course. Brian Peterson, wild man, Brian Peterson. Um, he does a lot of photo conferences. Both of those guys mm. always say, cut the flower off, cut the leaf off, cut the bearded wheat off, and you hold it up a, a little bit higher than the rest of the competition, the background, and you shoot down on it. So therefore it kind of, it uh, delineates the main subject from the background. And after, and it's, it's hilarious. These, are, these guys will hold out the, the flower in front of them 
and then focus on it. But they, of course, you don't get their thumb or anything, but you're just on the flower. Then that just brings it forward and puts your background far away. Yeah. But sure. I do that a lot now. I just trim things and uh, get more bokeh. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm still using these these few pictures here. I'm just uh, uh, using um, dynamic auto painter and uh, bringing out the detail. This is from last last spring. And I'm using a macro lens and I'm also focus stacking. So I did all the focus stacking. I think it's about six layers, mm -hmm. uh, six different focal points. And then I put them together, then put it through the, um, uh, the special effects program. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys focus stack, it's awfully anal. It works. Do any of you focus stack? Yep. 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 Yeah. Do you use do you use a rail? No, no. Okay. I'd love to learn. Do you, do you use it in the cam in camera? Yes. I just uh, take six different pictures, all different focal lengths, uh, put them together in Photoshop. Yeah. Well, I I think if I'm not mistaken, at least on the Canon that I've got, if you flip it over to live view. And That's what I the use. Focal screen. Yes. So you can see the squares. Yes. That you can go in and select manually yes. by yes. Tap, tapping on the square and it focuses on that square. Um, that and I don't, I haven't done that, but I do use the um, live view and the little uh, rectangle and, and blow it up, enlarge it, and focus on. Yeah that particular thing, but I haven't used, uh, what did you turn, you said some sort sort of grid? You'll have the focal grid showing. So if you select, let's say you select uh, um, the entire screen. And so you have the 64 squares sitting there, whatever it happens to be, uh, each one mm -hmm. of them highlighted in green, if everything is good, but you can go in and tap on a region um, and it'll bring that region into focus and you can take the picture. Um, I've never done anything that I touched the back of the screen and could focus. I've what? got a Canon 5D Mark III that's probably mm -hmm. eight years old. I'm what my husband's all got um, mirrorless. He's got, and you can touch the screen on that and focus on the area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Am I missing something? Um, it, the camera may not be capable of doing it. I don't know. Okay. I've just got a little Canon uh, 7 uh, uh, Ti or Ti7, so, uh -huh. um, but it's got that capability. Um, and it makes it a lot simpler if you're doing it. Oh, it does. It sounds you know, like it does. Yeah. 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 yeah if you um, want to add a little excitement, I, you can handhold it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do that too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> The trouble with shooting macro like this is that um, it zooms in so much naturally that a lot of times I can't get very many objects within it without backing up a whole bunch. And no. but my husband keeps telling me I should just shoot 24 to 105 and then crop it. So I don't know, just playing around. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, the color, color, the color palette here is just yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And so, Denise, is that a trico? Yes. And which one is it? That's a good question. I bought mine from um, uh, the uh, yeah. Yeah, down the, there at the yeah, farmers the, market. Some guy that was just selling oh, yeah. 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 plants. <laughs> and so, no, I didn't know the genus name or anything. Uh -huh. And I'm usually so good about keeping track of that stuff, but I didn't. Well, excellent. Thank you. Texture, composition, color palette, it all works. Yep. Okay. Now we've got a little studio shot here. Which is um, that one pot doesn't sit square. It just kind of leans. 
but it, I think it just add a, it adds a little dynamics to it that it's slightly diagonal, mm -hmm. but uh, this is shot on black mylar. Right. So it's just got the mylar laying down and then mm -hmm. I've just got the mylar actually just kind of over another um, easel, easel behind it. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Very nice. No, yep, that works out well. Yep. It's yep. so appropriate for here. And I shot that back in Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got some of the same pottery <laughs> uh, down, down in Tubac. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, the one here on the right um, with the lizard. Um, I've seen that same motif down there and some oh. and, and the one ah, now I got a turquoise mountain, maybe it is the gift shop there. Oh, yeah. uh, oh. Right as you pull in and you can run around the corner to the right and it's right on your right. Um, I took a picture of that pot. Uh, oh, did you? And showed I, it here before. Yeah. I think it's hilarious that uh, you come down here. I've been coming down here a long, long time. And I buy pots and take it back to Illinois. And then when we moved here, we bring them all back. Yeah. <laughs> so Denise, did you have some flash on this or? Uh, studio lights, yes. No, fl no flash as much as just studio lights. It's Very that nice. mylar just yeah. makes it glow. Very right. nice. Very yeah. reflective. Well, if you're in a studio, you could always Put a little tacky wax under that one pot and shove it up a bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's getting anal. I like it the way it is. Yeah. Nice. If that was my clients, they would have had me do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go for the next one here. Uh, this is uh, the uh, out in Vermont. And uh, it's pretty much a straight shot, except for I did put it through. I think it's topaz because it has that, uh, you know how it'll take the leaves and make it more painterly, but I kept the, the effects just to the background so that my white birch um, didn't look painterly. But I, if you zoom in on that, the background leaves are very yeah. painterly, but. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially over here. Oh yeah, all through. Mm-hmm. But it still has realism to it. It just has a little little bit of uh, artistic sure. snap mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, sometimes just a little bit's enough. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So you've got pairs here, but then you've got this pain feature here. So you've got an odd number anyway. That works out really well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, last week you were telling me about uh, designating a um, uh, color. Um, uh, what was it? Space. Oh, yeah. Cam. You know, having your camera and your Photoshop on the same. And uh, I haven't really had too much trouble printing except for images like this because the reds get so, you know, how, how hard it is to print reds anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I, I checked my cameras on sRGB. So I should be turning that to Adobe SRB to uh, match Photoshop? Yeah. yeah, Adobe RGB. Yeah. Are, okay. are, you, are, are you treating raw or JPEG or raw? Uh, both. Depending on how lazy I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I as I mentioned in the beginning, it, it seems that it, it it processes that particular setting if you're doing something beside raw, but if it's raw, it'll just tag it. It won't actually change it. Okay. Um, will do. Mm -hmm. Did you focus stack this one also, Denise? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I've got to figure out how to do that. I've got to practice with that. Well, you don't have to focus. I have the same exact picture and it's not focus stacked. <laughs> well, I've got okay. a few that are all right, but there's just, it's hard to get everything 
uh-huh. detailed. Yeah. Something to play with anyway. Yeah, if you're in the studio or somewhere where it's calm and things aren't moving around. Right. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I, br- I, I brought this inside, so it's not oh, moving okay. at all. Yeah. 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 So okay. you get a bigger depth of field and, and, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, even a slow exposure would be fine. I try to avoid anything above F16. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people have success with... Uh, really, really small apertures, but I'll even smoke uh, uh, focus stack landscapes. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. yeah. That's how you can get the foreground, the midground, and the- Exactly, yeah. Foreground and focus. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it very less dependent on what aperture. Yeah. I, I use a, a loop, do y'all use loops? Um, when I'm doing focus stacking, and I'm working in live view, I use a loop. Mm. You know what a loop is? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. to look at those 35 million size with better exactly. all day. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, I like loops when I'm working outside and during the day and I'm trying to see what, you know, playback images mm. and, and check out what I've shot. And yeah. I can't hardly see the back is of the yours screen. Is clear, clear or blacked out? Yeah. Because some of the old loops were clear, and and uh, when you're outside, you know, you can just take black tape around the clear part, and uh-huh. make it dark, so you, you know the ambient light doesn't get in there, and it's a lot easier to see. Anyway, so this is what oh, I got last week. I thought I could walk right over to my cabinet and pull out my loop, but <laughs> it doesn't seem to be just laying there. It's probably laying around somewhere else. Okay, last week I had it cropped. You did not see that black monolith, nor did you see the man. Ah, right. And also it was a different, a little bit different technique. But on this one, I, when I originally shot it, there was a person standing and they had their back to me and they were using a uh, cell phone to take that guy's picture. Oh. Well, I completely painted him out. Mm-hmm. And kept the guy and gave him more of a film norish type hat. <laughs> you know, that's easy to do. Uh, mm-hmm. Just paint that in too. So I, I t- kind of gave it more of that um, film noir look of on the waterfront and this kind of solitary figure standing there. Uh, um, a great, great image. Yeah, thank you. I really like this. I don't really care for that monolith back there. Um, but uh, you get a little detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't bother me. No, no, it's really nice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, the water is amazing. Yeah, I think I like this better than the one from last week. Well, it has a little more mystery to it. Yeah, it looks like you took down the highlights on those two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> just yeah. a di- I know, I know. Yeah. But that's just a different program. Okay. Okay. Um, and maybe I did. This was, I did this a couple of years ago, yeah. um, but I think it was just the technique I use. Because um, they, they look less blown out than they did last week. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. Uh, this one shot from the uh, top of the Empire State Building mm-hmm. and the windows were filthy dirty. And of course I'm hand holding this out of, so the original photo is not very good. But then I put it through um, its dynamic auto painter. Mm -hmm. And then I took the original sandwich together and erased back. Well, I put the the original on the bottom and the manipulated one on the top and then pretty much did a reverse vignette to erase back the original to bring detail out of all the different floors and lights um, that are in the buildings. And then I blackened blackened the sky because it was quite uh, light as like a lot of cities are, you know, light Mm -hmm. pollution. Um, So I just, if you want to zoom in on that kind of central area, if you don't mind, Sandy. um, You can kind of see it's, it, it has this um, kind of translucentness to it, where you can see 
more of the original. Yeah. I think it adds a lot to it. If you'd seen the um, the manipulated version, just didn't have that mm -hmm. uh, sparkle, the sparkle. That's a beautiful effect. Thank I you. like that Thank effect. You. I haven't seen that effect before. Yeah, that is nice. Well, that's like taking a bad photo, though, and doing something with it. Yeah. yeah. That is neat. That is very nice. Thank yeah. you. I, I won't see you guys for the next two weeks because we're going to Colorado. Okay. Um, but I, I'll certainly, uh, I'll, I'll be back. All righty. Keep it up. Thanks for coming. Thank you. All right. Jim Murphy. Oh, that's adorable. Oh. Oh. He looks tired, James. <laughs> He's making me tired. There's a, a juvenile harbor seal. Yeah. And uh, I shot it from really quite a long distance off, maybe 100 feet or something with my bird lens, 600 millimeter. And then I propped it up. And then I uh, topazed it a little bit and then vignetted the top and bottom. Very cute. I like it. Yeah. The fur on the coat is so interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Maybe the bottom, like his fin flipper, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Just brighten up that area just so you could see a little more detail down there. Did you brighten that or was it just kind of blown up? I, dar I darkened that actually. Oh, you darkened it? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it could be lightened, certainly. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I like it dropping in. Um, you like it like that? Okay. Yeah. The only thing I do is maybe just bring up a little more of the. Okay. Yeah, that's a good uh, idea. Yeah. That's a good I idea. didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> good one. Good one, Jim. Yeah, I think there's there's enough detail in that eye to. Yeah, you can pull that up a little bit. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Secondary sure. highlight. Yeah, the primary can go up a little bit, but the secondary highlight, you know. Would be nice. Other than that, I think you're good to go. Yeah. There's a nice. there's a bird butt shot. So. Oh. <laughs> well, bird belly. Yeah. Belly. That's right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, I love the talons. Yeah. This was yeah. this was this was shot with about a 250 millimeter. So he he was pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And I cropped off the uh, wing tips just to kind of emphasize the. I was kind of going for the claws and the feet uh, almost more than the head in this particular shot. Got great detail in both the dark areas and the light areas. Oh, absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous. Yeah, that's working nice. You got the warm and cool going too. Very nice. Getting a little bit of that halo effect along the wing there. I didn't really work on that. So oh. yeah, it's minimal. Mm -hmm. Minimal, yeah. It's not too bad. But yeah. I could take that down as well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh nice. nice. Okay. Yeah. So this is a I was out looking, so I, this guy says, oh, there's a place over there with uh, lily pads and there's birds that walk on the lily pads. I thought, oh, that sounds great. And there were no birds. So <laughs> I, uh, I settled for the flower and uh, I used two different topaz effects on this. So the, the, um, the lily pads themselves are chalk on concrete. I think mm -hmm. uh, Alan used that earlier as yeah. well. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good one. It gives a little, a little bit of texture, but I wanted a softer effect on the flower, a little more delicate effect on the flower, and I used the expressionism on the flower. So there's two different two different topaz effects in that shot. Mm -hmm. It's funny because before I started the class, I had those two stacked up on that uh, on that picture image. Uh, but uh, they weren't interacting well on that particular one, but they were the same effects. Yeah. yeah. They're, too good, they're too good effects, yeah. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, 
Wow. Yeah. So this was, I was uh, driving home and I thought, my gosh, there's a lavender field. Well, it wasn't lavender, it's actually potatoes. Uh, <laughs> I thought but, it was uh, <laughs> Yeah. I thought it was lavender from the road, and then I got over there, and it's like, oh, the, the potatoes. And anyway, I amped up the, uh, make it more, look more like lavender. I amped up the, the purple. And uh, this was shot with a, a 600 millimeter on a tripod, and then cropped down a little bit. And then again, I did a topaz effect on this one. And I can't remember which one of the effects it was, but um, so that's. That's kind of what I did on that one. Oh, sorry. Nice. Yeah, I got, I got down there and got the leading lines in there to bring your eye in and, mm -hmm. and waited till the sprinkler came around behind the tractor. Oh, yeah. Were they pushing that or was, was that being tough? There was actually, there was nobody, there was nobody there. Uh, so there was nobody in the tractor. The sprinkler was just going. I don't know where they, where they were at. Doesn't it look like they painted themselves into a corner? I mean, they parked that tractor out, and then all the potatoes grew up around it, and they it's don't. Like they're driving over their potatoes. I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, Al, that's my farm farming picture for today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't but know if there's you, any. Your your egg pictures look a little different than mine do. <laughs> yeah. That's where the. Paleo effects come in. I wonder just if there was any more detail in this that you might have been able to achieve. I might have been. I, I think I could have brought more detail up in there. I think I kind of took it down a little bit, but yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's working nicely. On the oh, you can shine over it. Yeah. So here there's a island near here called Lemmy Island. And on the island, there's a sculptor that lives there. Her name's Ann Morris. And she has a 20 acres called Sculpture Woods, place all kinds of sculptures around there and so forth. And this uh, is a sculpture that she made. It hangs in the living room here. And uh, you know, I just took it down and I photographed this. This was with kind of ambient light. It was kind of, the light was kind of bouncing around and everything. And it was like 12,000 ISO. Um, and then I did it on solid black, but then uh, I didn't really like that so much. Although then I took it into, uh, uh, again, Topaz and used some kind of a sketch thing that put those little marks into the, in the background. Mm -hmm. And I tried some different things. I, I think I would do another version where I'm going to turn it a little bit on its side and then float it on top of some clouds. Uh, I kind of tried something like that, but uh, a little different angle so you can see the side of it as well, too. So, it, you know, it basically looks like a, you know, a canoe or a boat or whatever. How big is this? This is three, three feet long. Oh. So it's a nice size. And actually, the way we have it displayed, it's, it's hung from the ceiling by one of the ends. And actually, when the when the windows open, it kind of moves around, so it's kind of kinetic. You see both Ooh. sides. The bottom side's kind of interesting, too. I think she used um, from either a palm tree or coconut tree or something, the, the material that uh, is wrapped around it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. It's quite unique. Yep. Nice shot. Thank you. I thought at first when I looked at it, James, that you had shot this off a bridge somewhere, and I was actually looking at some type of uh, almost like a kayak that's what, here. That's what I uh, thought as well. <laughs> yeah, like an indigenous kayak. Or mm -hmm. yes, I think I think that's what she was going for, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice job. So you can go back and tell her it worked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Kim. all right. I was in landscape mode the last couple of weeks. Um, this is out on White House Canyon Road. And I just went out one night to see what sunsets would look like out there. Because, you know, you see all these beautiful pictures from up around Tucson and everything of all the sunsets or sunrises, just because of all the saguaro and everything. And of course, we don't have all that down here. Right. 
Um, so I just drove out there just to kind of see what might appear. Um, I ran this through Topaz and one of the, and the impression filter um, just to give the Choya and whatever other cactus they are a little bit of more texture because they kind of all blended together mm -hmm. in the picture. And then to bring out a little bit of the texture in Elephant Head and the mountains back there also. Yeah, I think it works out pretty well. Yeah, good balance with the foreground, background, and, and the sky. Yeah. yeah. What time of night was this? Uh, it probably would have been, let's see, sunset is around 7.30, so 7.15, 7.30, somewhere in there. Yeah. Quarter to eight at the latest. So you get this beautiful light coming in from the right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was pleased. I wasn't sure when I, because I only took, I drove out when I drove out there and was, you know, stayed for half hour, 45 minutes. Like, oh boy, this isn't what I was thinking. But I thought, well, we'll just see what happens. So I was sort of pleased with the way it came out. Yeah. It's, it's a really nice switch from the yellows and reds and mm -hmm. oranges of a lot of the sunsets. It's, it's, uh, Mm -hmm. All the cool, the cool colors, quite nice. Well, I'm amazed at the sky here just about every day, but during monsoon season, you get this layering effect because uh, if, you know, off towards the east, especially towards sunset, you're getting the pinks and, mm -hmm. um, and then off, if you look, uh, I should say off towards the west, but off towards the east, you're probably getting, at least I saw this the other night, the grays and the whites um, from the storm clouds that were moving in. Right. And um, wow, it was just such yeah. an effect, though, because you go from one to the other and it's just unbelievable. Yeah. A couple of nights ago, it was really, really. We, we had a really nice sunset last night, yeah. and it was far better towards the east, towards uh, Elephant Head, yeah. because of the reflection. The actual sunset itself wasn't near as spectacular, but it was yeah, sometimes you know, that reflective nice. light is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get yeah. that reflection. This is looking, because this is on White House Canyon Road, just past the school, there are some sort of containers, oil, I don't know if they're oil, all oil, old natural gas, or not natural gas, but I'm not sure what they are, just past the school on the left. Mm -hmm. And there's an area to be able to pull out, pull in right there. So this is looking south, southeast, oh, yeah. actually. So um, yeah, looking south, because that's Elephant Head. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Nice and so. Yep. And this is then Kanoa oh, Ranch. The nice. Uh, this is with my iPhone. This is an iPhone 11 and processed in the iPhone with Apple's app. And then I also usually use Snapseed. Yeah. <sighs> and just the, re the clouds reflect, the lake was just as you can see, just as yeah. calm as could be. Oh. Um, and those clouds just reflecting in the water and everything, it just... These cell phones are amazing, aren't they? Yeah. I took a photo of the moon the other night there with my phone at 100 magnification, and, and I couldn't get the whole moon in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kim, I think you, you made Canoa Ranch look a lot nicer than it normally yeah. looks. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> this was, I think, last Monday it might have been. So this is, I just took this this past, um, this last nice. week. You get two skies and Excellent. two mountain ranges and yes. Excellent reflection. Yeah. Yeah. And the only thing, what was interesting is there was, um, Looking across, there's one of the shelters, and I, I took that out because the light was reflecting on it. But when I uh, had processed and then I sent this over into Lightroom on my 
desktop just to look at things a little bit more. There is a there's a gentleman in the picture when you enlarge it, and somehow he got duplicated. I'm not sure how. <laughs> um, so I had so I, you know, this cloned guy. him out. But I I was enlarging the picture. And I thought, wait a minute, how did this guy get in two spots at the same time? Yeah. You, you, sure you weren't doing happened. you weren't doing a panorama, right? <laughs> no. Uh. -uh. Okay. Mm -mm. Yeah, sometimes that'll happen in the panoramas. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, you see things after the fact when you get them in large. Yeah. <laughs> Not um, like that. Same day, out at Kanoa, yeah. and the rain, I, I just so rarely get a chance to see both ends of the rainbow. Yeah. yeah. And so this, again, was on, on my phone. Uh, processed in both the camera app and then in Snapseed. And I just, you know, brought up the greens and stuff a little bit because they were kind of just in the ground with, and the ground and the trees, weeds were sort of a little flat. So I brought those greens up a little bit and also to try and bring up the colors of the rainbow a little. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the foreground adds that much to it. I think you could okay. crop a little, little, yeah. a little bit of that out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've actually got a longer, I actually, well, I didn't crop up from the bottom. I cropped from the sides a bit because there was a lot more, I had more housing over to the right. And there's a guy, another guy, to, there's a guy to my left that was also taking a picture and I cropped him out. So yeah, I can see it getting rid of the foreground. Yep. Yeah, you can go a little more. Oops, maybe somewhere like about there. <laughs> okay. <coughs> All right. Oh. And first attempt at Milky Way, this was actually last fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, out on White House Canyon Road, um, I was pulled over next to, is it La Canoa? The, the road that goes down to Pickleball Center. Um, mm -hmm. There's that big kind of pull off area right there by um, the signs for Madeira, going to Madeira Reserve or wherever, whatever those neighborhoods are down there. And so I went out a couple different nights last September, I believe, to just try my hand at doing Milky Way shots. You were probably in Madeira shadows because there, there was lots of like five acre lots or something. Uh -huh. They're much more spread out. Probably in the shadows. Yeah. yeah. The secret sauce is in the processing for Milky Way. Exactly, yeah. You know, also knowing when it's up, um, there's that one app called Photo Pills. Photo Pills, yeah, I've, I've been hearing a lot about of that app on different yeah, webinars. It has like an augmented reality on it, which is nice. You can point you know, out yeah. where the moon's coming up and anything else you want to know. It's, it's I, I have downloaded that for my desktop Stellarium, which kind of gives you an idea mm -hmm. of the time of night also. Yeah. But I didn't have that when I did this. Yeah, it really helps out. Just you think it's up and it's not, or or it's already moved on. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there you go. All right. All right. Let's bring okay. those in. Uh, let's go to Ron. Oh, very nice. Make that a little bigger. Ooh. Ron, you still here? Take Arizona me. skies. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing him. I'm no, not seeing him. All right, let's let's save these for next week then. Maybe he had to go. Okay, Steve. Oops, let me close that and get them all at once. There we go. Uh, I guess it wants to do it on one. <laughs> wants to do it on uh, so I do that one. Uh, we know what this one is. Yeah. 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 Oh, you, yep, there we go. All right, let's just look at that one first, then we can put it away. Oh, wow. That's uh, Coleus. Coleus. Um, 
the original picture uh, is all reds and purples and greens, oh, yeah. yellows. Huh. And so I just flipped the colors, um, actually used a, an effect out of Topaz um, to take it down to this. Mm -hmm. And I just like the textures, um, the veining and the leaves. Yeah, beautiful. I like the color reversal. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking at first that uh, when uh, I had taken this picture a while ago, but uh, I was having trouble one of trouble. I was just confused as to what plant it was, and uh, it took me a little while to figure out it was coleus and not lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> Did you taste it? Oh no, no. I, I I avoid that kind of stuff, Alan. Ah, uh, where's the adventure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just don't eat the bad mushrooms. Yeah. And this is just, uh, um, you know, what this is. So, uh, uh, but this is pretty much uh, out of camera with uh, a topaz effect added to it. Uh, grunge. Like I a think grunge. Was, yeah. yeah. Filter. It looks like, uh, it reminds me of something you might see old photos of Route 66, what you'd see yeah. along Route 66, which um, is, not, you know, this is a motto, but. Now, I should say I did take it into Photoshop and remove all the parking space lines that were showing. Um, oh. So a few things disappeared, but uh, that was about really the only heavy work I did in Photoshop on this. Yeah, you might want to push that 66 look and do kind of a faded 50s preset or something. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I looked at that, and uh, yeah, I may go ahead to go back and overlay that on top of this one. So yeah, yeah, little shot, Steve. But I had to stand in the middle of Aravaca Road to get this, and then you know, you know how people are here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, look over your shoulder, look over your shoulder, because the pickup truck's not going to give you any warning, <laughs> yeah. or they're not going to see you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> More to worry about <laughs> some of the drivers here. Yeah. So I, I kind of, it's almost got like a miniature camera effect right in the middle, um, which I don't think I was shooting or planning on at that point. But it, it's almost like a, I don't want to say a foreshortening of the, that uh, middle portion. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of like the effect that I get. And I think while I was in Photoshop, I did a little burning too so in the doorway to where the skull or the snout portion and around the eyes a little bit. I'll have to look at some of them. I'm going to take a screenshot of this because I haven't been down there in a long time. I've got some shots from before it opened again. And yeah. it seems to me that that crack in the middle of the skull has expanded a bit. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Because that was taken just last week. And yeah. the cow palace, I got some pictures of the cow palace too. So, uh, what's the status of that? Is it? Are they, uh, I guess they settled the lawsuit. Are they rebuilding it or? That I don't think uh, they haven't started yet. If they're uh, going to. Yeah, that was a mess. But I, I think he was wanting something like two million dollars for the. <laughs> Oh uh, well, yeah. You can mm -hmm. buy the whole town of Amato for two million. <laughs> or like twenty twenty dollars. <laughs> All right, we'll be nice. <laughs> well, you know, I always thought it was a blessing when that flood came through there because that place used to smell like mildew and rot when it was open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anything he got, it was a blessing. All right. And this is just a poppy head. Mm -hmm. um, of course, before it opens, but uh, that was taken into uh, Topaz. And I think I used color burst on this one. 
Hmm. I just like the way that the, the Boca um, changed in this one. I, I should say the colors are, um, to me, a lot more compatible. So. Mm -hmm. And it still maintained a good amount of detail in the flower or the, the pot itself. Mm. Interesting. I don't know if cropping this tighter would help or not. Let's just take a quick peek. Yeah, I might cut down that big dark spot in the corner over there. So Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I think I like it a little better. Yeah, so it kind of looks like the top of a scepter. Yeah. Right. I like it cropped as well. Um, it it's trying it. The background's so interesting; it competes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right there. I think if that were faded out a little bit more, Steve, it would pop that uh, poppy head out a lot better. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And this is just down on, uh, yeah, frontage road, I guess it is. I had to take a stop and take a picture of this because these things are like flowers in the desert, but you know, de death flowers. Um, they're pretty much everywhere. Um, so I wanted to get the road into this uh, a little bit. Um, and I think I used two effects in Topaz for this one. The, uh, I think it's um, the cable effect, connecting cables, and then a grunge filter on top of that. Mm -hmm. It's very emotional. I like it a lot. Yes. Um, in in Nick um, Silver Effects Pro, they have um, a, a technique where it lightens the middle, the subject area. Yes. And it helps focus your attention on it a little. A little. Um, I, I don't think know. I have a. I think I have a black and white version of this. But I, oh, it's not so much. I want it black and white. It would yeah. be that it gives. It puts more. Um, it, it highlights the middle okay. and lets your background stay dark. I love the whole effect. I just kind of like to see the the flowers stand out just a little bit brighter. Yeah. So in Luminar, you've got that effect and you're in uh -huh. color. So it's uh, yeah. center. So. Uh, move you guys away again. All right, so we just go to vignette and open advanced settings. Um, you got to do something to get it active. So let's, let's just move the amount a little bit. And then you've got this inner light, which is the same kind of thing. All right. And then right. you can take it down by, by, by your size. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yes, exactly. You know, and then you can, you can feather it. Maybe a little bit like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so you can do something like that. And then and if you want to exaggerate it more, you can darken the edges down more or not. Yeah, maybe somewhere like that. So, so yeah, there's a little. It just, it's just kind of so sad to think that, you know, somebody died here. I mean, just. Yep. And yeah. they're scattered everywhere on these roads here. Yeah. Um, kind of has that lonely feeling, doesn't it? Yeah. Certainly does. And this is a road you wonder how how could you have an accident here? I mean, <laughs> honestly. Well, a coyote like longhorn. <laughs> Coming back from the longhorn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna blame it on deer. Yeah. The deer ran out in front of them. Yeah. Burr. For our smelly little friends. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And this was over at Kanoa, uh, the last one. Yes. Just, uh, 
I took that I, same picture. <laughs> okay, I don't know it's what specifically what the plant is. Yeah, it's the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, that's, ah, that's what I thought when I saw it. Too. It came from Kanoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I like this one because it's, this is like mom and children or something. I mean, there's... Uh, mm. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of scary. I like it. I like it. But I, I, I'd taken a picture, I think, the day before, and I didn't like it, so I had to go back and shoot it again. And got I was, I was going to ask you how. I was going to ask you how long did it take you to put all these little pens in there? <laughs> yeah, all the pens. Yes. <laughs> days, Alan. Days. <laughs> Who's this voodoo now for? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You really didn't like that person. <laughs> <laughs> it's not orange. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I guess that's it. Let me, uh, let me just uh, stop sharing here and find the recording and stop that.